All right, I think we are on. Good morning, my people. Sorry for being a little late. We are having some technic uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get it uh, to float. Good morning. So I think it's on. Good morning, my people. We are back live and we are having some technical difficulties, but I think we have fixed that so thank you again for joining us today is april the uh, 25th of 2020 and uh, i am here with my sisters of course so let me start by introducing my name my name is mona jim so aga oh, well, i reside here in houston texas and i am here with two of my wonderful sisters i cannot do without them so this is Augusta, please carry on. Yeah, my name is Augusta Nasike and I'm in Richmond, uh, Texas. As usual, we are here to um, open the minds of our people about things that really matter towards our independence. Thank you. And then I have my wonderful sister, Ipi, in Kentucky, except that she's not eating their chicken. She's <laughs> eating the Af African chicken. Sister Ipi, yes, please. So. <laughs> Good morning, my people. My name is uh, Ephita C. Simon Okube, and uh, we're here to discuss with you, rub minds together, so that we'll get to where we're getting, that we want to get to timely in a timely manner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Of course, before we get started, we do want to acknowledge our Lord and our Savior, the man who made it possible for us to wake up this morning to be here. We thank him for the work that he's doing for us both physically and spiritually we are happy to call ourselves the children of god and we know in no time sooner than later <clears throat> sooner than later he will answer all our prayers so without wasting most of our time because we are trying to reduce our time to for five minutes that's how long it takes a normal adult to sit down and listen to something so that we are not spending so much time um uh, between prayer and all kinds of stuff to prolong the program so our goal is to keep it at 45 to an hour no more than that so if we recall last week on the first part oh our topic today i'm sorry is the eight point strategy to freedom the eight point strategy to freedom we did the part one last week where we looked at the uh, the four points of it and if we recall uh, we had mentioned that the first thing was the um, the map that we are talking about, the map of the place that you're talking about, because without this map, uh, the international community uh, does not understand what you're referring to. So you have to have some type of location for you to say this is the area that you're referring to in terms of freedom. And then we point two, we mentioned the consensus and internal cohesion among the people or the peoples that you are uh, is looking for this self-determination slash independence so this is important before we did this we want to show you guys what the um u.n charter for human um, rights said so getting their internal cohesion is important so that's the second strategy uh the third strategy is the strategy for taking down the 1999 fake constitution the rogue constitution that is holding us down, the pressure cooker of injustice, just like the American embassy will call it. That was the third point. And then with the uh, fourth point was the question of how to dismantle the 1967 caliphate-led alliance that held all of us hostage. Because what they did with the colonial armed robbers was to um, give them the area, the territory that will make them um, the majority for the country in question. So today we want to start by, um, we've already recap on the first point. So we want to uh, continue with the rest of the point. And uh, if you recall, we told you guys that now we Africans have to come together. We have to drop our uh, differences and fight for collective survival because what is uh, happening at Okonkwo's house is happening at uh, Okeji's house so that we will have to um, put our resources together in terms of getting our um, people out of this. So the people that we are dealing with, they are getting more greedy by the day. At this point, they are not, <clears throat> no longer interested in stealing from our people. 
they're also interested in stealing our body parts you know they don't want to exterminate they do not want to exterminate us completely they are tired of using guns and bullets or biological warfare now they're using viruses food vaccine and of course we cannot afford to remain silent silent so it's time for us to find a roadmap just like south africa did and namibia did a roadmap that will lead us to freedom we must begin to examine the eight point strategy led by the uh, lnc tony nadi the secretary general we look at the four points like a recap and today we are going to look at the rest so look for the video to educate yourself on those uh, these videos are out there they are not hidden if you're interested in actually getting this freedom so we'll continue on finding that part looking at what has been done what needs to be done how they need to be done we want to read and explain the five uh, to eight points to conclude this eight point strategy so i am going to try to post it as we go so that you guys can follow um, i'm going to put it on the platform sister augusta is going to uh, read the uh the strategy from uh i think uh, point five and i'll try to post that so sister augusta okay. point five. all right um should i go yes okay so uh we did the four points last week and we are going to start with point five so the point five uh, the question of using the campaign name tag Biafra at the pre-referendum stage of the campaign. The use of the Biafra name tag for the self-determination campaign presupposes the inclusion of the entire Eastern region of 1967. If without a comprehensive discussion and in fact a concrete agreement with those components of the old Eastern region, that got excised as River State and South Eastern State, that's now Rivers, Bayelsa, Cross River, Aqua Ibom State, all those four states from the Eastern region of May 27, 1967, ahead of the May 13, 1967, unilateral declaration of itself as the Republic of Biafra by the Eastern region. You go proclaiming Biafra from the airways and rambunctiously from the Inderland Igbo territory in the manner that the Biafra agitation bandwagon have done, you immediately set up an intractable controversy about the exact boundaries of the Biafra you're talking about, thereby distorting and destabilizing the internal cohesion and solidarity critically required by the territory to bid for self-determination and independence. You also immediately unite against yourself all the forces that came against the Biafra of 1967 70. So the LSC, on the other hand, set a definitive map on the table using the 1885 ethno linguistic map of the Lower Niger Territory, which clearly delineates the constituent component nationalities of the territory. They spent six years, that's from 2003, engaging various constituent component nationalities and attaining a consensus threshold that became the basis of the public presentation of the Lower Niger Congress in 2009 in Warri. So, Sister Ikri and Sister. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, Sister. See, interestingly, um, these things have already been, you know, like you, you said it there, you know, like they wrote it out there. It's for, it's for us to understand. Um, I don't know why some people like um, misguiding others and then, uh, and even blackmailing people. You know, what, when somebody says one thing, another person will use, will use it, blackmail people and say something else. Because we hear this story where they say, oh, LNC does not support uh, Biafra, it does not want us to have Biafra. Sometimes when we push something, you know, people that um, excuse me, that have refused to understand what is going on. So it's a strategy. The issue is not whether Biafra is coming or not. It's a timing when you are supposed to introduce that name. It's the same geographical space we are talking about. So whatever you call it eventually, 
is not the issue. The issue is to get that space out of bondage first, like Namibia. The case of Namibia, when um, the South African people were uh, under the apartheid uh, government, mm -hmm. what exactly what is happening to us as a people was happening to Namibia, mm -hmm. where they strategically worked with South Africa to get themselves out of trouble. So we don't like people blackmailing others, like the issue of when um, we spoke about the bank. Somebody else used it to, to sell his markets. Also, the issue of a defense fund. These are things that have come in this struggle because sometimes people behave as if what we want is for another person, and the other one is for the other place. So no matter how anybody thinks, is the whole the that space is what we're talking about. But we're saying, how do we get this independence safely and timely? How do you do it so that we don't die again? It's about strategy. And these are legal issues. That means when you say Apple, what Apple means, what another pe this person understands Apple to me is the same thing you, you understand Apple to me. It's about communication. And like we said, there are legal issues. This, um, well, after the war, the genocidal, the Afro genocidal war, they divided and dismantled us. So we are no longer the way we were before we went into that war. Even before we went into the war, because the war came suddenly, we didn't plan it. It was defense. It, they brought war on us and we tried to defend ourselves. We were even more united when we went into that war than now. Because somebody technically, systematically dismantled and divided us. Like Sister Augusta read now, all the states that mentioned it. It was 50 years ago we fought that war. The children you have now do not even understand, it, and they make sure they didn't teach about that war in any, any school. Mm -hmm. The children do not even know what happened, why, we, what, why that war was fought. So now you want to go into somewhere using a name that to them is about the Igbos, for instance. And Igbo is just one group out of a lot of nationalities in that area. So you cannot overshadow the people. You cannot just move. You cannot repeat what um, uh, we are saying that Britain did to us. We can't do that. We can't afford to do that. It's not even about whether it's good or it's not good. You cannot afford to do that. Because somebody maliciously created states. And these states have been kind of sort of autonomous by themselves mm -hmm. with their government us with their everything so when you are talking you say ah we are not evil when you're talking you know like there's so much division already which the enemy caused because the tactic they use is divide and conquer okay. so they divided us they so divided us that one group of people they would divide them into three and share them into different states so that some one Ebema in one state will not know that he or she is related to the other Ebema in the other states. These things we have done, that's meticulously. Intentionally. Intentionally. Thanks, my sister. So when you now come into bringing these people together, how do you go about it? What do you do? Do you just go on air and start shouting to them, we are together? No, you need a robust and comprehensive discussion with all the nationalities that make up that geographical space. The jobs, the BBUs, the bankers, the Anna. what their names, Anna, no, they, they are many, and their nationalities. They're not like just 10 people or 100 people, even if they're just 100 people, they're still a nation. 
you must accord them that respect. Treat them like a nation that they are. Then make sure they work with you. I don't know if we we're able to post that um, <clears throat> that uh, map. No, my dear, I'm still here trying to manipulate it. There. It's not letting me. So. Okay, let me project it. Um, okay. Why you do that? So, I can, um, okay, so I can go ahead. Why bring it? Right. So, because that map shows where we are, you know, who we are. You okay. Understand? Yeah, I, I do have the map if that's what you're looking okay. for. I have it. Let me. That's who it. we, that, that, that's as far back as 1885. That is all of us there. Nobody was caught out in that map. Right. That 1885. Are you able to see? No, it's, it's not showing. Um, okay, Sister, if we do have the paper one, you know, we yeah, tried to last week. week. Let me. You know, I think I may be able to. Why is it still allowing? Like, it's not allowing me to copy and paste anything. Yeah, that's the map. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the map we are talking about. Mm -hmm. This map, it's all of us complete. Complete. Yes. When you mention Biafra, some parts of these people here are okay. not inside that Biafra that you're calling. So it will not be technically correct. It will not be legally correct because you and has all the list of all the nationalities with them already so anyone you mention they go to their archive and pull it out and see this is the only map that closely represents us this is the closest one that has all of us in it and all these people that make up this map you have to meet them one by one and consult with them you don't just like shout at them over radio or over social media and say don't you know we are together no you will not be wise doing that and that is what lnc have done for six years they went one by one to all the nationalities that make up this map discussed with with their elders discussed with their people the stakeholders it took them a long time to do this work so it will not be okay for you to go on radio and start abusing them, shouting and calling them names because they're not joining in your franchise. No, that's not right. So that is it on this topic. I hope I didn't take too much time, my sisters. No, my dear, we are trying to make it make sense that when we are mentioning this word Biafra, that we are making sure that we all our brothers and, brothers and sisters are included in the map. And coming up with that map is the most important thing that includes all our brothers and sisters so they can feel like they're part of this so if you are in isolation doing one thing and they don't feel included then you're wasting your time mind you we are the kind of people like sister augusta will know who i am and i'm having a wedding if i don't go and personally invite sister augusta she will say i'm not worried she will not come even though she sees me going back and forth carrying my wedding gown and my wine so it's always that's our tradition to go and consult with people one-on-one -on -one. even they know that's what you're doing they know you have a wedding but our elders expect you to come and tell them i'm having a okay. wedding mm -hmm. and officially to be present so it has to be done right there is no other way because that's that's the way they think and the elders are part of what we are doing you know we need people that are prominent in our land to be part of what we are doing and consultation is number one and not any other way consulting with them one-on-one -on -one. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's, it's so important that we consult with them one on one. And as Sister A correctly said, you don't just go on radio and determine it that, hey, in Banke, you are not Biafra. No, we all have to sit down. There has to be a roundtable discussion. There has to be no two ways about it. No, you announcing it. There has to be a roundtable discussion. That's very effective. All right, let's go to number six of the eight point strategy. Now, the number six, the question of the terminal process for concluding self-determination campaign. While the Biafra agitation targeted what is called conquer and occupy, which basically means overwhelming and overturning of the existing constitutional and governance order, the LNC grant script targets an orderly unbacked referendum. Yes, yeah, Sister Ifi, let's go. Oh, Sister Muna, yeah, let's go with that. Right, my dear. Do you even think I, I know what you read? <laughs> I'm here looking at it. 
I was oh, yeah, okay, trying okay, to uh, okay, post. I was trying to post the uh, uh, PowerPoint yeah. though, on the thing. He's still not allowing me. To, I'm so frustrated. Let me go, Stacy. Please don't. So, sorry. You see, when we say we want freedom, we want independence. Everybody agrees. Everybody in that geographical space says yes to independence. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. The question is how. Mm -hmm. How do you want to build this cat? This cat that is about to devour people and eat all the rats and do everything. Who wants to build it and how? What's mm -hmm. the process? How do you want to do it? That is where people are having diverse opinions. And because what we are looking for is democratic system, because we cannot, we keep saying it on this show, that we cannot leave the zoo and enter museum. Mm -hmm. We can't leave slavery, bondage, cave, and then set up another bondage for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can't do that to our children. So because it's a democratic system, true democratic system that we're looking for, everybody must. So the what, the how is very important. And we have to look at all the options available to us and pick the one that makes most sense to what we're saying. Because already we have a, 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 an existing constitutional governance in place. They say how? Rather than explain, you start shouting and throwing tantrum up and down. Don't you know I need freedom? Don't you know I need to go? How do you want to do it? How? What's the process? Because that is what is important. There's a distinct uh, 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 constitutional governance in place. What are you going to do? That is what this place is handling. How do you want to go about it? Someone has said. Right. So, yeah, it is important that we um, make sure that we do not hold other people in slavery like somebody else have held us all these years. So making sure that we connect with those that matter, align with those that matter, bringing them on board to what we are doing, explaining things to them in a way that they will understand. Mind you, some of these things may, some of these people may not come on board even after explanation, even if after consultation, mm -hmm. they may not agree with you. So it's okay, but you know, like somebody will always say, my sister will say, offer them a superior argument. And at the end of the day, our people are smart enough to know what works. And none of them, they are all in this mess together. Mind you, they were there answering intelligentsia and senior advocates and, and uh, what, what else do they call themselves? Elites, the rich and the famous. And yet, the full animal is over them. So at some point, they, I know they are frustrated. Even those that are afraid that didn't want to speak before, now they are speaking because it's too much. You know, if you look at the life of a typical African man, 60 years and below, they have never seen anything good in that country. Mm -mm. Oh, no, 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 no. That's even too young. Let me go to back back to my dad. My dad is 90 something years old. He has never seen anything good in that country before. Nobody has. So at this point in, life, in time, you live your whole life. You're 60, you're 70. You live in a country that belongs to you. You have never seen anything good in that country. At some point, you have to do what is right. And I think the time is now. The time is now for us to move and get our freedom and self-determination back. Thank you. Can I ask something, please? Mm -hmm. Hello. Should I yeah, go ahead? Can I, can I go ahead. Yeah, you know, because um thanks uh Samuna, because you mentioned something, you know, uh about killing of Fulanis. In the idea when some people are thinking of that they wake up from somewhere, then conquer and occupy their people. It's not a laudable one. Because you can't be thinking of how you just wake up, you go and kill all the, all the governors, kill all the politicians, kill, 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 kill. You're using the same medication that the enemy used on you, on your people. So that idea should just be thrown by the side at all, because we are not looking for how to kill ourselves. These people, they have not even killed ordinary fly, want to kill elephants. See the fly is there, walking up and down. You couldn't kill them. Then you are entertaining the idea of how you kill your brothers and sisters. 
so that you go and conquer them. You're even worse than the white man. You're worse than the enemy. At least the enemy is not one of us. You are one of us. Now you want to kill your brothers and sisters. Are you king? No, that's not the way to go. Thank you. Yeah, that's not the way to go. The way to go is to follow the right protocol so that we can um, back this referendum. We have to follow the right protocol. You know, I remember the slogan is referendum or death or no election, no, ref no referendum, no election. All those, uh, ja all those um, gibberish, I don't know what to say. Those are the things we have to tone down a little bit. If we don't follow the right protocol, we'll continue to shout and scream and you know and time is going time is really not on our side but we thank god for the lsd they have a strategy they are moving on as we've often said this is a 16 points a 16 steps and they've they're already at the 14. so i mean we're good to go okay you're positive so we need to you know continue the protocol no shouting no scream if you want to kill the governors why haven't you done that all along you know that's another thing you keep shouting this governor that governor you're gonna attack you oh my god all this rhetoric, we need to put them aside and look for what... It's even unnecessary. It's unnecessary. It's even unnecessary. Like somebody was asking that he wants the Biafra today. You can't get that Biafra today if you don't follow these steps. You can't. Even when you follow these steps, there's a method. That's what is called transition. You have to transit from one governor, uh, uh, one governance to another. Well, I think it's, so, it's, in, the, it's in the topic. It's in the really, topic, so really that we can get there. So you, you can't just wake up. He had an Nigeria this morning, he be, he be a Biafra, that's not how it's going to work. It, it's methodology, you have to follow certain methods. So I, I hope our people are awake this time around. So now let's go to number seven of the uh, eight, eight strategy. Number seven, the question of an orderly transitioning from the existing constitutional and governance order. Another important but distinct compartment of the wider question of terminal processes is the question of how exactly to interface with the existing constitutional governance order as we approach the inevitable terminals of military Nigeria. While the LNC script envisages a transitioning mechanism likable to the 1990 1994 process by which South Africa eased itself out of the apartheid constitution order, the Biafra agitation looked towards a cataclysmic, a cataclysmic commotion that would overthrow the existing constitutional and governance order in the intermediate territory of Biafra in which the ringleaders of the Biafra Restoration Commission who have already parceled out the key offices of state in their phantom republic under an omnipotent, omniscient supreme leader would take over the reins of power. There can be no better recipe catastrophe. It is like sitting in Egypt and sharing the promised land among stakeholders while leaving the appalling task of driving out the giants that occupy the promised land to others. So um, that is our number seven. Uh, thank that. you. Uh, mm -hmm. You see, the LNC have offered us the how to. Because you said, everyone agrees. We need freedom. We need independence. The only issue is how. And thank God somebody has sat down to tell us how. Because like, as Augusta said, like the paper said, you can't be living in Egypt and be dividing the promised land with all the giants still living inside it. That doesn't make sense. So there's need for transitional government. You have to transition from darkness into light. You don't sleep one day in Egypt and wake up suddenly in the promised land. No, you have to actually move from point A to point B through a carefully thought out plan. Understand what we said. He said a carefully thought out plan. Because when you have a carefully thought out plan, you will take into consideration things that might arise in your journey, things that might happen on the way, all the scenarios that might play as you're moving from point A to point B. So those things will not come to you suddenly and then you lose a uh, direction. So it, it's very important that you understand 
And when they ask you a question, how are you doing this and this? You must have answers because you have sat down and carefully what are the plan. And it's not a job of one person. It's what people we do together. Because like we said, that area is multicultural, multi-religion, uh, uh, multi, um, uh, and then multi-languages in that area that we're talking about. So it is important to know how the German feels, how the Ibibio feels, how the, uh, 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 all these people, how do they feel about each uh, um, point? Then when you have done that, you now agree, okay, this is what we're going to do. So it's going to, you need a carefully thought out plan. Somebody has said that failing to plan is planning to fail. If you do not plan, that means the plan to fail. That's what it is. So it is important to know exactly what you're saying. And thank God that the people in LNC, you know, I know uh, Mr. Tony Nadi is a lawyer of 26 years, with specialty in jurisprudence, in jurisprudence. So that means he knows what he's talking about. It's like you have a case. If you have a case in court, if you represent yourself, you might not get it. Mm -mm. You will win because you're not trained in it. Yeah, you don't know the legal jargons, the uh, terminologies being and the implications and the implications, yeah, and everything. Mm -hmm. You need a lawyer that will interpret it for you. And thank God they have sat there and done this job, and it makes sense that you move from point A to point B through a process, which is transitional government. Is it transitional government that will monitor? All that needs to be done that would is provide the, the referendum we are talking about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even fund it mm -hmm. monitor how to divide our our assets our assets our mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because or someone will say oh and nigeria will be like somalia yes because you don't have any property there you don't have any asset now that's why you want to demolish everything it's just like the story of uh, solomon when solomon was king those two women that had issue. Issue. The woman with, with the dead child said, divide the, the, the living child. Kill him and divide him. Because their own child is dead. That's why she could say that. Mm -hmm. But the woman that has the child said, no, 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 please don't kill the child. That's how and you know who owns something and who does not own something. We are aware that our brothers and sisters built up Abuja, built up Lagos. Mm -hmm. The whole country, for dead. God's sake. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, built, they built the entire, have you been to Kano? They built the, the northern, the entire northern region. Northern region. Exactly. And that is, that is how we are telling our people, hey, stop all that thing that you are building over there. Let's start moving down east to set it up. But that doesn't mean that you're going to lose whatever you built back in any of those It places. doesn't even make economic sense. Mm -hmm. You cannot make that mistake because like America now, Americans have businesses. And oh, is outside America, and they pay tax to America. It's a huge sort of revenue for oh. America as a nation. You already have this things. Why do you want to demolish them? Mind you, we started from 20 pounds. After the war, they mm -hmm. gave us 20 pounds per mm -hmm. family, not per individual, per family. Mm -hmm. And from that 20 pounds, we built the entire nation. Mm -hmm. We don't want to demolish. It doesn't even make sense to do that. And that is why we believe that we need to cooperate together, work together, have a transitional government that will move things, ease out the apartheid uh, constitution, and bring in a better thing, system that will help us get to where we're going to. Go ahead, my sister. Absolutely. And we're not the first people to do this. We keep referring to the South African apartheid uh, constitution that has to be, that was taken down. It took mm -hmm. them literally about four to five years to, to, to take it down. So it's not something that you get from not engaging the people that matter and getting people uh, on board with what you're doing. Because the earlier we start this work, and that's what we keep telling our brothers and sisters that are there, some of them are uh, negating what we are saying thinking, okay, you've done your own thing for the longest time. Where have you been? Nobody has recognized you. I've never seen any 
uh, Biafra mentioned anywhere in American news, they call us separatists. Separatists, after they killed us, they are still calling us separatists. Separatist. And we're telling you guys that we must do things the legal way so that this world will never be used against us anymore. It will never be used us because the world watched while we were killed, while we were destroyed. They didn't do anything about it because according to them, even up to now, I was watching a story about this guy telling something about Africa. Do you know how he still described us? He said the separatists of the East. This was a show that was posted three months ago when they were telling about what happened in the Biafran War. That's how we are still being described up to today. And even now, if you look at the blue bug news, all the news, fake news, as far as I'm concerned, that matters because they are the ones selling all this propaganda. Mm -hmm. They are the ones telling all this vision, uh, telling all these lies via vision, like one of the brothers will say, he said television is telling lies via vision. They are the ones telling these lies. People are watching them. People are engaging them. People are assimilating what they're saying. And they're still using the word separatists. Separatists after they murdered over 3 million of our people. And we say we don't want that anymore. There is a legal way that this can be done. Like we keep saying, South Africa has been a, a case study for us to follow. Mm -hmm. They have done this before. And it takes time to get. It's not something that you wake up one day and it will be done. There's some process. There's some process that must be in, in place in order for us to um, get where we're going. So, sister, okay, the uh, emerging federation. Yeah, the, map. Yeah. the eventual map, yeah. That right. will be the emerging map eventually. Yeah, right. Yes. So that yeah. Will, you know, because when you put face to what you're saying, mm. it makes sense. a little bit, sister. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. These are the emerging federation that you have to work with to get what you want. Each, mm. this is it. And then you have this other one. The alliance um, territory. So you see, this system has made us majority, like we said last week. No more minority. Mm -hmm. So we actually have enough power to do whatever we want to do if we work through this pathway. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. So we have to follow the protocol, follow the guidelines. That is the only way we can get what we want. Now, the number eight. Um, the, uh, the number eight of the entire end strategy, we have the international imperatives. So it takes only a casual review of what went wrong in 1967-70 to realize the international imperatives. Whilst LNC has ensured a most robust engagement with the stakeholder segment, the Biafra restoration agitation seemed completely oblivious of the key concerns of the international stakes and the dynamics driving the sub surface attitude of the chief stakes as evidenced by the 1967-1970 episode. The Aladima episode of 2012 more or less presents the roadmap by which the earnest self-determination aspirations of the greater Eastern Nigeria could be more safely, more assuredly, and more quickly attained it must be acknowledged that the vacuum created by the failure of the Igbo leadership collective, political inclusive to offer hope to the Igbo populace, distressed by the deadly malfeasance of unitary Nigeria, was directly responsible for the emergence of the totally uncharted Biafra restoration agitation. The refusal of that leadership collective, leadership collective to engage in any meaningful way beyond the intermittent opportunistic forays by the political merchants of the East, compounded the, the cousin between the leadership collective and the populace. In closing, while it could be validly said that the Biafra restoration agitation is at best the angry expression, the aforementioned desire for self-determination by Eastern region, the LNC grand script presents the strategy and vehicle for attaining that desire. Well handled, the former could constitute some kind of fuel for the later, but the first order of business must be to distill a clear destination and potent roadmap. Looking at what has happened between December 11, 2018, multi region freedom power proclamation, the January 17, 2019, emergency press conference, conferences on the Nigerian situation in Washington, D.C. Uh, the June-July IRF ministerial roundtables involving the U.S. Congress and State Department, 
which brought about the damning U.S. verdict of Fulani ethnic cleansing against the indigenous nationalities of Nigeria, as well as the August 2019 more uh, damning verdict of the U.S. Special Rapporteur, which described the current constitutional and governance arrangement of Nigeria as a pressure cooker for injustice. It is redundant to seek to persuade anyone any further about the potency of the LNC grand script as outlined by the Alabama episode of 2012. So, Sister AP, let's explain yeah, that. See, the question is about in, the international stakeholders. The Americans will call it um, American interest, you know. And that's why you have diplomats, um, you have ambassadors and uh, foreign embassies they are there to protect the interests of their nation. That's what, that's what they are doing there. So there's no way you will not put them in what you're doing. Exactly. Carry them along. They already have investment in your land. Because that's what happened to us during the uh, genocidal war. That's why the whole, whole people came against us. Because they did not understand our intention. We, we, if the war was too sudden for us to have enough time to explain to them what we are doing. The little support we got was while we were in the war. Then um, uh, Ojukuna started sending out diplomats to go to nations. If you go to our history, mm -hmm. you see how this, we, it like forming diplomats and everything to go to nations to explain to them what, because already Nigeria was telling them lies about us. Telling them I want to conquer our neighbors, that we are this, we are that. So these nations have to start going to in the midst of the war to explain, like, no, this is not the what is going on. This is it, this is it. That's why we have tried getting some little support coming to help us. Then the rest, they were against us because they, they told them wrong things about us. We can't repeat the same mistake. It doesn't make sense. So this diploma that we're saying, they they, re, they report daily on the events that is happening, the report to their government, is that's what they're doing in your land. Everything that happens. So they report, but if you go and explain to them by yourself, somebody will not misinform the government that they're representing. So it is so important. It's so important, like, the, it's, the way it is, is that the job of these diplomats, because people need to understand what we're dealing with, before you come in your land, they're already describing the characteristics of the court to their government. Mm -hmm. And they will define it according to what they understand. It's like Sister Muna said, he said somebody was right now, still calling us separatists. That's what they will tell their people. This language is because some of them don't even understand us and, and because it's too short. You just come, live in your land, maybe three or four years that their diplomats represent, representing their government. They don't know you. And they're going to assess you and report on you according to what their brain told them. And maybe according to gossip that they pick from here and there. Mm -hmm. If you have a system that we actually go and sit down with them, negotiate with them, tell them how you're going to protect their interests, tell them how you're going to have bilateral relationship with them, mm -hmm. tell them what is in there for them. Mm -hmm. You see, you're going to have a smooth transition. Mm -hmm. Because by the time you finish explaining to them that this is what is there for them, because everybody, every human being is kind of selfish. It's what is in there for me. And the people understand that what we are talking about is not a joke. We are talking about 300 million barrels of oil per day. That is what is at stake. 300 million barrels of oil per day. Now, you want to do something? With this level of investment and things that people are getting, and you don't think you have to sit down and really and negotiate them, and talk to people and engage them and argue with them, get their opinion, find your opinion and reason together. If you make any move, they will assemble all their machinery against you. So we do not want to lose our people again. We lost 3.5 million in three years. We don't want to go through it again. Somebody, before you start saying, oh, uh, is, it, is, God, is it that God punished us with oil? Or uh, the oil in our land, is it, is it a cost? 
No, it's not. God expects you to use what you have to get what you want. Mm. The asset in your land is a negotiating power. It's not a cost. It's a <laughs> negotiating power. But you have to explain well to the people that have investment in your land. The international stakeholders that we're saying, you have to sit down. Hmm, absolutely. Did you get cut off? Your phone, you you got lost for one, I don't know, one second, I don't know, two oh, seconds, okay. three, four, five, one second, I don't know. But that's okay. okay. Continue, continue. Hello? Okay, there we go again with our. Oh, you didn't have to ask. Can you hear me now? Yes. I, I, can you hear me now? Yes, it's better. Go ahead, sister. Okay. So I said before someone starts asking, so is the oil on our land a curse? I said, no, it's not a curse. God just expects you to use what you have to get what you want. It's a negotiating power. You have a lot of assets, thank God. And people are interested in your land, thank God. That shows you that if we have this nation we are talking about, that we will build it so fast, so fast. But we need to take the right step, like Sister Augusta would say, we need to do the right thing, move from one point to point B through a smooth transition. Nobody wants that war anymore. Because mm -hmm. they want stability of that region. The people that have investment in our land, they will prefer a stable government. That's why they want democracy. So it's a question of explaining to them, explaining, going to sit down, that human beings like us. We are intelligent enough. We have enough technocrats. We have enough scientists. We have enough uh, professionals that can match them and sit down with them point upon point. This is why this is like this. This is why this is like this. They will ask you questions, you answer. They ask you questions, you answer. You talk. Everybody will be comfortable. They will move. It's a smooth. It's going to be just smooth. And done like this. But things have to be done the right way. Thank you. Absolutely. So I was watching one of the ambassadors of uh, Nigeria like yesterday by the name of John Kimball, and he was saying how the uh, the foreign in interest doesn't really give a hoot about Africa. All they are worried about is what's theirs. Like they are, they are the embassy to foster the interest of Americans. And one of the things that he mentioned is how we, the people, are not using what we have to liberate ourselves and the notion that we have a nation that is not functional i think he wrote the book called uh, nigeria on the brink or something like that so yes, this yes. thing has been ongoing that the nation is not working we know that uh, they know that it's not working and what he lamented actually he emphasized more on the fact that the interest of america is for them to have a stable like my sister said a stable country a democracy because they know democracy is more stable than an, uh, an army uh, government yeah q government and all that stuff so they want that stability but what is it then that we need to do to ensure them because that's if you look at his so he spoke for over an hour the thing that he's talking about is you being able to america being able uh, to get something out of you and we offering them a democracy that is stable enough for them to uh, do any type of investment so we are talking about, you know, being safe about what we're doing and timely delivery of our people. Because when we understand the destination where we're going, then we'll make plans to get to that destination safely. That is mm -hmm. why we want a proper roadmap, you know, yes. so that you don't end up in a place that you shouldn't end up. And we keep telling you guys, we cannot be sentimental about this things. Uh -huh. Some people are upset about this. I don't know why the truth hurts Africans more than anything else. And we keep mm. telling is, is this fakeness that is keeping us down? You will call an American their home now. If he doesn't want to speak, he say hey, Mona, he wouldn't even answer the phone. Or you say, hey, Mona, I'm, I gotta go. I'm not speaking. But our people will try to make up stories, trying to appeal to the soul of the other one without saying what they feel. We I don't feel. know why at this point in our lives that we don't, what we are doing is not working. The fakeness is not working. Look at how every home is breaking apart because you're sitting at home with your husband and your wife together. Because you guys are used to running away from each other now, you're being stuck together. We really have to do things right. Stop lying to yourselves about things. Face the reality and find the proper way to go about it. So we thank God that work, uh, things has begun to happen for us. 
you know, in 2000, like my sister Augusta said, 2018, December 11th, uh, there was the Freedom Park Proclamation, which led to the emergency press conference in Washington, D.C. in uh, 2019. Okay. And mm -hmm. with that, we had the roundtable that allowed uh, the, the, the Department of State to declare the claims of uh, uh, Christians, the ethnic cleansing going on back, uh, back in that country. So August 2019, the U.N. verdict that Nigeria constitution is a pressure cooker for injustice. So they know all these things. They, know all these they things. live in the land. They know all these things. So we cannot put them on a notice. We cannot tell them. They know these things. Yeah, they're in your country watching. So we yeah, are waiting to... for the country to implode. You understand? And it has actually gotten to the brink already. Do they have a choice when oil is yeah, uh, yeah. minus? Oil is yes, minus so. thirty six dollars. Minus thirty six dollars. Minus negative. And oil is oh, negative. Negative thirty six dollars. So well. My dear, the it, expert it, said it, before it, they can come out of this one, it will take years. It will take years. So very it, soon, nobody will want to be a governor anymore. Nobody will mm -hmm. want to be a senator anymore. Not anymore. People will rather go and live in their houses that they bought all over the places, 27 houses for one person. So I it's know. going to implode. They know that that place is they a know. ticking time bomb. Russia, okay. They know what they're talking about. It's about to go and that's it. So right. we, our people should just be mindful of what they do. Stop going out there to agitate. The agitation, the part, I think Sister Eko is going to explain the percentages of what we needed to do. Or what has been done so far and what more the agitation part is like five percent it doesn't even it's not even much so there's no point going out there to agitate there's no point going out there to carry flag and the army will see you and kill you for nothing there's no point doing that because the country itself is about to go it it has gotten to that it has gotten to that level the the pseudo president is dead that is the one that has been presiding over Nigeria for God knows how long he's dead. So there's infighting, there's all kinds of things going on. They the kidnap their own vice president. <laughs> they their own vice, vice president. Nobody knows where he's, 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 he's corona, corona, corona mm -hmm. him already. Nobody knows yes. where he is. So the truth about it is that that country has broken. It has broken. Nobody, no, no one single person will take credit for the break because this thing was meant to break. It has been a long time ago. It was done. meant to break a long time done. ago. Even some people actually delayed its breaking. Yes. You understand? Yes. As of 2015, it was supposed to have come because it had reached its 100 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Man, uh, 2011. 2014, mm -hmm. 2014, that reached its 100 years mark. So it should have exploded that 2015. But the truth about it is that some people now went and started doing something underground that has delayed it now. So the truth about it is that underground started doing, making some noise that delayed it. Unnecessary noise, you know, unnecessary, unnecessary noise. noise. Making and our people our people killed. The, the yes. noise was getting our people killed. Instead yes. of preserving our people, it was getting our people killed. Yeah. And we have told our people, as they correctly said, the referendum. Is the tra after the transition, we'll not do the referendum. Is it after or before? Well, we'll do the referendum. The referendum will be sponsored by the nation. So you going to donate money for a referendum, you going to donate money for defense funds, the country is imploding. Or what we need to defend? But now we're defending yourself. Self-defense is what you should be thinking about now. Not you trying to create an army for no reason. So this country is about to bawala in pieces. So yours is to just have that little patience that we are there already. Sister, if we explain the percentages, the 75 percent, 5 percent, and all that. Okay. Yeah. See, um, uh, the 75 percent is the constitutional force majority. Yeah. That is how you work until you ease out the apartheid constitution. Because that constitution, that 1999 constitution, is an illegal document. It's a fraudulent document. One person or three people or four people cannot gather together and write the constitution of a nation and then put it with the people. Yeah, well. That is act of treason hmm. against the people. Hmm. So, it's and the man really responsible for this is still alive, by the way. Exactly. Maybe God is keeping him alive for him to undo what he did. You know, sometimes heaven will say, don't come yet. You have done enough. 
trouble. Okay, go and fix it before it starts coming. Don't leave the world in trouble. So we, we, that's seventy-five percent. That's work is now towards the end. But it took some people sitting down and doing this work. That's why it took a lot of years, twenty-one years, to get all that wrapped up. Because it's not one person we're talking about. We're talking about four federations. At least we are more than even in that video you, that I interviewed, which Samuna mentioned. The man said he said we have 200 to 250 to 300 ethnic mm -hmm. groups yes. and languages and cultures and everything. That is even like one. So you have all this together. So when Samuna uh, Augusta is talking about something exploding, nobody wants it to explode because if it explodes, it will be jagged. That means it will divide. Like I tell people how I describe it that the, the child is in the birth canal. You have to guide the child carefully to, del to, to deliver that child. If, if you allow the child to not push out anyhow, the, the parts, the, the parts of the woman will be destroyed. So many things will be destroyed. Should I go ahead? Go ahead. So, but if you carefully do it, it will go through this line and it will be carefully and like organized in a particular way. So that is 75%. Then you have 5%, which is to get internal cohesion of all the people that make up that map we showed you, that 1885, to get them together. That's 5% of the job. Then to get all the other region, all these other segments of people, like here, this white segment that you call Alliance Territory, to get them together to now become the new majority. Technical difficulty is frozen. Stacy, we can hear you again. You can hear me again. Okay, go ahead. You're back. Go ahead. You're back. Wow. Okay, did you hear the the getting this the yes. alliance? The yes. alliance. Yes. 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 Alliance. So that's we talked about five five percent remaining now because I've self seventy five. So we now talk the about the uh internal cohesion, which is five percent. The, uh, all these other segments to get this uh, uh, new uh, uh, majority, the alliance territory, that's 5%. Then to get um, the international bodies to join in what we're saying, that's another 5%. Now to get um, uh, uh, to transition, make that international government that will move from point A to point B is another 5%. Then to mobilize people for referendum is just 5%, which is what some people have been doing for the past seven years. You don't need it. Our people already, they know they, will, they, they want to go. The major work is bringing down what is holding up, breaking the cage. And you have to break it in a planned way, smooth way. Not by shouting at people, not by insulting people. Not, you have to work with the people, their nation. You have to respect them. You have to respect their constitution. They even had the constitution before we came together. Because when you say Federal Republic of Nigeria, it means that Different nations are coming together to federate. They had their constitution. They came with their constitution to do it. So they know these documents are still there. It's just for somebody to understand that there's a protocol and just follow it and be home. See? Yeah, Sister Kui, um, like what? Oh, <laughs> for some reason. Hello? Yes. Okay, for some I'm reason, I think uh, the uh, internet yeah. is playing uh, a smart one. Okay, as you rightly said, uh, the agitation itself is 5%. And agitation is not that we are going out there to carry placards. No. Agitation is that we are going to get all our people together to vote for the referendum. So one of exactly. our listeners is saying that, is it your agitation? If you want to do agitation, is it your own? Honestly, some of us are either tone deaf or, I mean, or for some reason, they just love the franchise where they are generating money. They are not educated. Else. They are not educated. They don't yes. have time, my right. I mean, so, we're talking about the land that you and I own. You're actually own. Uh -huh. The so land it, belongs to all of us. It mm -hmm. doesn't belong to you. It's not your father's company. It's the nation. So what you do matter to me. Exactly. Just like what I do should matter to you. So, Mr. Soja Chijoke, uh, whatever your name is, uh, we're not here to, you know, wrap, uh, to exchange words with you because it's, it's like you are totally off the map. And, of course, we don't do any calling here, at least not for now. Maybe with time we would. 
So one thing we want you to understand is that you, you said it's not our agitation. The truth about it is that your agitation has actually endangered the lives of our people. Yes. It has killed more people than we are trying to preserve. So your agitation, going out there to agitate and get our people killed is so unnecessary. Because if you go, they will kill you. They will kill you. They won't look at it twice. Okay, look at this coronavirus that is happening. Nothing is coming to the eastern region. All the money that are being donated, donated by South and so the money that are being donated to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, federal government coffers, is not getting to the people in the east. It's getting to the northern to the, to these Amajiris. That's where the money is going to. It's going to the northern region. Young people are told to stay at home. And I did it come out, the no food. When you come out, they will kill you. When you come out, they will, the army will throw you in the trash. They will kill you. They will molest you. All kinds of things happening down there. So we're saying that your agitation, the entire agitation that we did for this request, for this independence is just 5%. 5%. And it's not us going out there carrying placards. No. It's us getting our people to be involved. Just in the to rest. mobilize our people. We are, we are, our people it's are already mobilization, mobilized. not even agitation. Yes, it's, it's mobilization. mobilization. Our people are already mobilized. Because they're our waiting, people are ready. Their mind is made up. Yes. Their mind is made up that they want to go. It's just to mobilize them for them to vote. That's to, to explain to them how to vote uh -huh. for the, at the referendum. And it's just 5%. Oh, right. That's it. So thank you guys uh -huh. so much. So it's really important that we understand what we are trying to do here. And... Uh, I think we just have to be maybe a little patient with our people. A lot of them have, you know, like you said, rightfully say, some of them are brain damage. Some of them are just waking up now. They're just getting to the, uh, the, the playground. So they don't even know what the issues are. So we'll continue to educate only because as mothers, as the mothers of the land, we do not want any more blood in of our children on the street of uh, uh, that nation. We want it to be done the right way. There's nothing else that we want if not more than the best for our young men and women because especially during this time of COVID-19 the kind of stuff that you're seeing there a boy burned her mother uh yesterday and ended up burning herself in NBC uh, the other one raped two girls so that they can enter court and then he turned around and tried to take money the punishment is endless we don't want to be hearing this story the young man was tied down. I don't know if they're going to kill him. We don't want to be sick. We want that boy to go and walk 12 hour shift and come back and pass out. Because that's what happens when you work hard. You don't have time to uh, go into getting home on a court. You don't have time into uh, reaching out people or going to people to steal money because you are working. I know how tired I am. I like to take my naps. So I don't have time. My time is precious to me. And back home is not the same. People have, they have so much time on their hands. They don't know what to do with it. And like the saying will go that an idle man is a devil's workshop. So we don't want our children to be devil's workshop. We want them to use their ingenuity to grow our land. We want them to use their ingenuity to produce things. We don't use their ingenuity to, to go on a national, international platform and compete. Those are the things that we want. And if anything can get us there sooner, please our people, we must follow that route. We don't have time anymore to waste. We don't want, because every day, any day, any day, we do not get this independence. It's another day for our people to die. And it's not fair. It's not fair that I'm sitting in my in my house comfortably eating what I want, doing what I want. And then whenever I turn on Facebook, all I'm seeing is dead, my people dead all over the place. That's not what I envision. It, it kills me. I don't know about some other people. They think this is a joke. They think this is about one person. It's not about any person. It's about all of us all of us living that, that that best life that you know every one of us can live because there's potential there's a reason why god brought every one of us here and back home a lot of our people are not actualizing that goal and we're saying enough is enough so we are hoping with this eight point strategy that we understand what it what we need to do is to educate ourselves the information is out there on the lnc website go and read we want people to under bring the information that will help us to get where we are going safely learn what this the matters are so that we can move we're not here to castigate anyone or any place or anybody at that matter please let's just get this ball rolling we need to get home soon you know god is already helping us all you negative 36 cents i still don't know what that means you know how is how did you buy it for negative 36 cents i don't know but anyway, it's, neg <laughs> it's negative $36.
it, so it, it means that they, they are actually paying you for buying it like it's not just <laughs> like i know they are <laughs> is that what it is they pay you for buying it (laughs) they're paying you for buying it so for for buying your own oil you came to sell i still don't understand i thought when it gets to zero nobody's buying how did it go negative zero you know south and uh if not for uh, that country god knows that oil you should go to negative one million let it come to let it come to it we need our freedom one way or the other that is the only thing that i thought that is so, so to speak holding us together because the jigawa man believes that the oil in Bayelsa is his own so if he now finds out that the oil is negative he yeah. will say to pay up a Bayelsa and go on <laughs> he will be owing he will be owing his buyers 36 dollars a a barrel (laughs) the oil does not Mm. it will just forget about uh, bielsa and that the ones he's stolen for jigawa you go and maintain it if 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 they even have the maintenance culture and and that's and that's why we're telling our people you know the people in this lower niger that are group sister the devil is on your uh, internet line, man. Your right. Wi-Fi. <laughs> you're, you're not coming oh out. You're, you you, me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, try again. I will try again. I said, we're telling our people that greatest asset is not the oil. It is our brain. The ingenuity of all of us. We can do so many. There are so many other talents and so many things that we need to do. All right, and that's what I'm praying that the oil you will just disappear. In that case, we we'll use other things that now, we what have. It means, what so, it means that now you have to, even if you dash them, they will, they will have to say you have to pay us for dashing us. <laughs> 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 that's the negative. And <laughs> then you, 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 you dash them free. They say no. You have to pay us for us to collect it. So the oil has not become a liability. It's true. But somebody has to pay you. Like that you have to pay somebody to take it away from you. According to according to the Bloomberg news, it says that that the the worst part for the uh, the nation called Nigeria is that they don't have a refi- refinery, so they have to go and ref, uh, refine the oil somewhere else. And then on top of that, they don't have containers. So the container they are using to store the oil after uh, uh, refi- refining the oil belongs to somebody else, and they are renting it, so they still have to pay. So. Nigeria they should take that oil to down. Jigawa. Let them go and drink it. It's water. After all, it's Nigeria their gold. Is down. My Nigeria dear. Is coming. Like the system, you see that heaven is working with heaven us. Is working. Like, heaven is stop working. Heaven is working. Stop dying. Stop dying. Mm. Heaven is collaborating mm. with us. Yeah. Things yeah. are happening that will help us come out of where we found ourselves. Mm-hmm. So just play along with the, 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 the intellect work, you know, brain work. Right. Okay. You froze again. All right, our people, we are almost done here. Thank you guys so much for joining no, us. Uh, my sister is still talking. Sister, your your internet doesn't like you this morning, obviously. <laughs> it's not allowing you to finish your statement. So thank you guys for joining us. Honestly, you know, from my standpoint, I just want the best for everyone. I wish there's a way I can, like, somebody will say, wake up tomorrow, be after I see it. That would be ultimate. I just don't want any more debt. I want more for my people. And if only we can do what works, if only we can be honest with ourselves so we can move with the uh, information that we need to get where we're going and stop lying to ourselves. Because we don't want to have a final. My sister gave a very good example. Somebody is telling me, here's the book here, read here so you can pass the final. He said, no, 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 no. Give me the money. I don't need to read, you know. And whereas that's what you need to get the job. So let's stop lying to ourselves. We need to do better. We need to do better, people. Sisters, your final statement before we go. Yes, yeah, let us let us stop lying to ourselves. We need to do better, and we are almost there. All you just need to do have a little patience. It's almost there. I think the coronavirus actually, um, you know, a little bit shook down things because by now we would have had the first major, as the LNC has been saying. So I would have been at the second phase by now, but you know, it's kind of like delaying a whole lot of stuff. And you know, this is affecting the entire world. So it's not as if it's affecting Nigeria alone, it's affecting America. You cannot move about, you know, to do things. So we just want our people to exercise a little patience. Um, the agitation is unnecessary at this point. It is unnecessary at this point. What we need to do is to focus on a roadmap. 
Remember, we've been talking about roadmap, we've been talking about blueprint. They are so important for what you want to do. For you to be moving and not know where you are going to, you don't know your destination. You're just hoping that Chuko Kabiyama will make it happen. Chuko Kabiyama doesn't work that way. You have to have a roadmap, then he's going to lead you towards that roadmap, you know, so or lead you towards the pathway. So we want our people to be focused and stop being sentimental. This is the only way we can get our independence. Thank you all, and um, hopefully next week we'll uh, be here together. Thank you. Yes, um, should I go ahead? Can yes. you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, our uh, people, for watching and listening. We believe that you're, you're thinking because we know that you're able to think. And um, what, the last word I want for us to have in mind is to understand that the nation we are seeking is for all of us. It's not one man, it's not one woman. So you cannot tell your brother and sister, no, don't do this. We want to conquer you. We want to do this to you. No. But all this thing, those mindsets need to begin to change. We are working together to reason and discuss. If you are still throwing tantrum, you are insulting people, abusing people, vehicle has left you. You have moved from that place. Move on. We are going to greater things. So we just encourage you to be part of the great move that we're making and very sooner than, than later, we'll be home and we'll be home intact. We don't want you to appear there with one leg, one eye. No, you will appear intact. May God keep all of you. Thank you very much. Amen. May God keep all of us indeed. We are all we are all in this together, like my sister said. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Please share, 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 share. Like our video. We are also on YouTube by the name of Daughters of Truth. And that's what we're here to do. We are here to tell the truth, no matter who is affected. If it affects me, poof, happy. If I said it against you, too bad for you. But the truth must be told. It's just the way that we roll because we need to get where we're going. Our brothers and sisters deserve better. They deserve better. They deserve more than the world is offering them. And we need to be an agent of uh, that uh, betterment for our people. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Bye-bye.